evening to you. A small West Michigan community is rallying around a high school basketball star tonight who was critically hurt in a car crash. A sophomore at Homer High School is in the hospital tonight as his team prepares to play without their standout. News Channel 3's Mike Kravzik is joining us live tonight from Homer High School to show us how his team and the community there are coming together for him. Mike. Yeah, Kate and Andy, in the lobby of the gym, you could see a tribute wall has been set up to honor Tyson Garrett, the basketball star here at Homer High School. There's even a collection jar outside the gym to collect money to help with uh, Tyson's family's medical bills. In two hours, the varsity team will play for the first time without its captain and a leading score. It's a huge loss, but Tyson's supporters say that his fighting spirit will help him recover. Since he was a young kid, his coaches say Tyson Garrett was always determined to be the best. There's some nights I don't know if he even left the gym. The Homer High School varsity basketball captain was heading to practice Monday night when state police say Tyson's pickup truck hit black ice and struck a tree two miles from school. I saw an ambulance. Teammate Luke Butler says he dropped Tyson off from school about an hour before the crash. So I was trying to call him and you know, tell him to be careful. State police cited Garrett for driving too fast for conditions. His family says their 16-year-old suffered a traumatic brain injury, bleeding on four spots in his brain. Tyson's father, Henry, says his son was airlifted to University of Michigan Hospital in Ann Arbor. I know it's, a, it's very bad right now, but... I know he's fighting very, very hard, and I know we got all these prayers and God on our side. And For the first time since he was admitted around 72 hours ago, Garrett says his teenage son is now responsive. Says Tyson opened his eyes for the first time last night. It opened his eyes this morning when, I, when he looked up at me, and then I asked him, you know, can you hear Dad? And he shook his head, yeah. The former basketball star's road to recovery is unclear. His supporters say he'll keep fighting. Getting back on the floor will be good. His teammates and coaches now preparing for tonight's game without their star player. It's a real tough time for us, but I think it brought us together. Before the team takes the court tonight, each player will wear a t-shirt with the same number. One, the number on their captain's jersey. It feels good. It feels like he's almost here with us. With his basketball dreams on pause for now, Tyson's family and teammates hope to get him walking and talking again. Now, before tonight's game, Tyson's coach says they will do something special to pay tribute to him. Tip-off here is at 7 o'clock. A Kalamazoo woman who says her 9-year-old daughter died of COVID-19 is now herself at the center of a criminal investigation. The Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety tells us it's now investigating the mom for allegations of neglect. Now, we first told you last night about 9-year-old Cy Asia Buckman, Buchanan rather. She died on Saturday just a few days before she would have turned 10. News Channel 3's Jay Shatara has been following the story and is live now at KDPS headquarters to explain why the police are now looking into this mom, Jay. Yeah, guys, police here tell me the investigation started just shortly before the nine-year-old's death. Now, staff at Kalamazoo's, uh, a Kalamazoo hospital in the Department of Public Safety, or excuse me, Child Protective Services, contacted Kalamazoo's Department of Public Safety, and that's when this investigation launched. Saeja Buchanan was very sick, her mom says, when an ambulance took her to the hospital. Less than 24 hours later, Shatavia Buchanan says the police were at her door taking photos of her apartment as part of an investigation. Nine years old, Saeja died January 15th. Less than three weeks after her mom says she and her siblings tested positive for COVID-19, Buchanan tells me none of her kids were vaccinated against COVID-19. I was labeled as... I was neglecting my kids because I had COVID. Um, I really didn't understand how I was ne neglecting my kids because I was sick. Kalamazoo police confirmed today an ongoing investigation into Buchanan for possible child neglect. Police have not provided additional details as what prompted the investigation. Beyond the call from the hospital on December 30th, I talked to Buchanan yesterday. Today, she did not want to do another interview. Here's what she told me yesterday. COVID is the whole reason why she's even there. COVID the reason why she passed away, like she passed away for natural causes. So at this point, I'm still questioning, like, why are they still bothering me? 
Buchanan has raised about $4,000 through an online fundraiser to help pay for Saeja's medical bills and now funeral expenses. The website reads, my daughter has gotten COVID, but I knew if she was going to get it, her immune system couldn't handle it. Buchanan tells me Saeja was born with a chromosome syndrome that required special care. She says Saeja's father picked up those duties when Buchanan got sick. Buchanan tells me her other three daughters recovered from the virus. KDPS tells me that the criminal investigation into Buchanan centers around Saeja who died just days before her 10th birthday. Now, police tell me this investigation into possible child neglect is still ongoing. Now, I checked family court records and found no prior data on Buchanan. Now, she tells me that she is currently waiting to hear back from both police and Child Protective Services. And the search for a new Grand Rapids police chief is entering its final stages tonight. The three finalists shared their ideas on how to build trust and the changes they would make. News Channel 3's Maria Serrano is joining us from City Hall in downtown Grand Rapids to explain tonight's primary takeaways. One of the candidates includes the current Battle Creek police chief. The other two come from out of state and they all made it clear that having a transparent police department and also working alongside the community is a priority. Three finalists all competing for the title of Grand Rapids police chief. News Channel 3 finding out the tone and leadership style of each. When asked about the need for more GRPD police officers, Battle Creek Police Chief Jim Blocker says adding more officers is not necessarily the answer to addressing rising crime rates. He says law enforcement is only part of that solution. You said yesterday that we can't assume that more cops will fix it because it isn't only on law enforcement. Explain that. This idea of just adding more people to address crime is, a, is misunderstanding the idea that crime and its increase is a law enforcement problem. Others like Chicago Police Commander Eric Winstrom making bold promises. If I'm the chief in Grand Rapids Police Department, the idea is to make the Grand Rapids Police Department a great place to work for officers. Commander Winstrom says he'll support, empower, and encourage creativity um, among police one. officers. Uh, enhancing the positive community engagement of officers in Grand Rapids would be an immediate priority for me. Everyone. But a priority for retired Milwaukee Police Inspector Utiki Jackson includes going out and addressing concerns from the community. Just um, engaging the community uh, face to face. All three candidates would be new to Grand Rapids, hoping to gain the trust of the people over time. Seeking out and and exploiting every opportunity to work with the community and the neighbor neighborhoods. Two of the candidates also speaking from personal experiences to, to guide their policing decisions in Grand Rapids. You even spoke about your experience when you were 11 with your brother being arrested. Yes, making sure the officers are spending their time in the most productive manner possible maybe is not going out and arresting low-level drug offenders. Inspector Jackson says he shot and killed an unarmed man in 1997. The shooting was ruled justified, but made a permanent impact on his life. What goes through your mind as you look back at that experience? And what role do you think this story or experience will play if you do become the chief? Ensuring that, uh, that our training programs are um, meeting state standards. The city is accepting community feedback on all three candidates until Wednesday. The city manager says a decision won't be made until a couple more weeks.